In this clip we're going to introduce lag operators and characteristic equations specifically for autoregressive processes. We'll introduce an example. Here we have an AR2 process with uh, the two AR coefficients phi1 and phi2. This is also called a differ difference equation. Where that name comes from isn't really important at this stage. So what we shall first do is we'll introduce lag operator and that's really a, a different way of stating this process or handling lag terms. So let me state what a lag operator is. If you see somewhere L Y T what that really means is one lag of Y T that means Y T minus one. If we need two lags so if we need Y T minus two basically what we want is we want two lags so L squared times y t. So that's how lag operators work and you know longer lags uh, with the obvious modifications. Now if you have a lag operator times a constant, i.e. a coefficient, that just remains the constant. So that means we can restate the above process like this. Okay, all we've done is we've replaced y t minus one with L y t and y t minus two with L squared y t. What we can now do is we connect, can collect all terms with yt on the left hand side of the equation. What we get is this one. Uh, we've just moved two terms to the left, from the right to the left hand side of the equation. And what we can now do is we can factor out the yt because we, we can see the yt appears three times here. So we have 1 minus phi 1l minus phi 2l squared times yt and then the right hand side remains unchanged. So far we've just restated the process. Now the task is the following. What we really want to know is whether that process for yt, this dynamic process for yt, which is described by this AR2 process with these two coefficients, phi1 and phi2 and alpha, whether that's a stable or explosive process. As it turns out, the information we really need to determine whether there's stability or not is hidden in this term, in this bracket term. Okay, So everything is in here. It contains the lag, information about the lags and the phi1 and the phi2 for this particular AR2 process. So let me just restate this over here. Now, it actually turns out what we will be working with is a sort of slight relative of this and I'll state it first and then I'll explain how we get to it. And you should see this, some similarities already but there are also some differences. So the coefficients appear in exactly the same way but the L's are somehow have disappeared and are now replaced with lambdas. Now this is called the characteristic equation. Well it's not an equation yet. Something is missing to make it an equation. Really it's a polynomial so far. Now to see the similarity let's put a 1 in here. So now you can see that all the coefficients the 1, the phi 1 and the phi 2 are exactly the same over here. So all the coefficients remain totally unchanged. They're all the same. But now, instead of the else, we have lambdas. To see exactly what has happened uh, here, so let's just highlight these. There's no lambda here, and then we have else here, else squared there, l there, no l there. Now, really to to make it obvious what has happened, we can actually introduce an L to the power of 0 there and a lambda to the power of 0 there. So we've replaced the lag operators with lambdas, but we have reversed the powers. Okay, so where we have L squared, we'll get lambda 0. And where we have L 0, we get lambda squared and in between. So we have reversed powers. So this is what's called the characteristic polynomial. It, we will turn it into an equation very soon. So where does this come from? Really, it, 
it comes from the link between here an AR2 model and an MA infinity model, moving average of order infinity. If you know, understand the link between these, you will recognize this equation. But for the time being, just accept, accept it as it is and use this rule. Now, how does that characteristic equation, or so far it's not an equation, tell us whether the process is stable or not? So that I haven't told you yet. This is done as follows. Now we actually gonna turn this this beast into an equation. So what we'll do is we'll take this polynomial from up here, characteristic polynomial, and we shall set it equal to zero. Okay, so as we do we take the polynomial and we take it we set it to zero. Let me just state that here. Here's the polynomial, and we set that to be equal to zero. Now, this is really the characteristic equation. Uh, now, it, uh, it is an equation. It has an equal sign in here. So, what we now need to do is we need to basically, we have a quadratic equation here, and we need to find the two solutions, lambda 1 and lambda 2, that make this equation true. So that was for an AR2 process. Now, if we had had an ARP process, we would have had an equation of the peeved order, and therefore we would have had P solutions for lambda. Okay, lambda i, where i goes from one to P. Okay, so we would have had P solutions. So it turns out that it is characteristics of these solutions that will determine whether yt is a stable process or not. And how exactly is that? So because it's so important this is written in red. So yt is a stable process if the absolute value of our solutions, however many we have, so for all i So if all the absolute value for all solutions is smaller than 1, okay, so the i will be from 1 to p, and we want the absolute value of lambda i to be smaller than 1. Sometimes we also call that, we want all solutions to be inside the unit circle. Where that term comes from, uh, it comes from having potentially complex solutions, but we're not going to discuss that here. So let's work through an example. Here we have an AR2 process. Now we we'll work with AR2 process because that will deliver quadratic equations and we can solve that. So let me... Add, sorry, really what I want to do is I want to restate that in the flag operators, so that's going to be 0.4 times L times yt plus 0.3 times L squared times yt. So now we'll bring all the uh, terms involving yt onto the left hand side. So we'll do this the pedestrian way. We'll have another example which we work quicker. So we have them all on the left hand side. Now we can factor out the y as we did before. We got this characteristic polynomial times yt equals epsilon t. And once we have that, it's pretty easy to basically state the characteristic polynomial or uh, leading to the characteristic equation. So let us first copy the coefficients 1, negative 0 0.4, negative 0 0.3. And now we replace the L's with lambdas but with reversed powers. So we'll have lambda squared here, lambda there, and lambda to the zero here, but of course lambda to the zero is just one, so we can just take that away. So that's our characteristic polynomial, we make that an equation by setting it equal to zero. 
So here we have a quadratic equation and we want to find the solutions for lambda. Now this will lead us back to our high school days, hopefully good memories, and you will remember that if you have a quadratic equation of that shape, then the two so you can find the two solutions as follows. I'm not going to discuss that, that will just that's just repetition of what you uh have learned at some stage and perhaps even still know. So let's apply this rule here. So the solutions for lambda are we'll take we'll need to take the coefficient to the lambda, the negative 0.4, and divide that by two. We'll proceed that with a minus, then plus minus, then a big square root then that negative 0.4 divided by 2 term again and that needs to be squared and then we subtract the, the value for q in our little rule and that is negative 0.3 so that's negative negative 0.3 and now we can just do a little bit of algebra and we'll find that is 0.2 plus minus square root of 0.34 and that will deliver the following solutions, lambda 1 and that is equal to 0.2 plus and the square root of 0.34 turns out to be 0.5831 so the first solution is 0.7831 the second solution is going to be 0.2 minus that square root value and that turns out to be negative 0.383 so the question now does that is does that describe a stable or explosive process for yt we'll have to go back up to our rule we want the absolute values of all solutions to be smaller than one and indeed that is the case here so this is indeed this describes a stable process for yt let's work through a second example so again because we can solve quadratic equations we use an AR2 process and here it is and now I'll jump straight to the characteristic equation you can go through all the steps again but you perhaps you can already start recognizing how we get the characteristic equation so that's lambda squared minus 1.7 times lambda plus now because the coefficient is minus 0.3 and that is set equal to zero and now we need to go through our solution machinery again I'll uh, skip many steps here and we get this result and uh, you turn this through your calculator and what you find is that lambda 1 is equal to 1.5 and lambda 2 is equal to 0.2 now this is not stable because we have one solution lambda 1 which has absolute value larger than 1 i.e. 1.5 so it's not stable 